Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to be taking the wooden floor material that we made in part one and adding in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches to give our floor a more realistic lived in feel. Okay, before we get started though, let's take a look at the textures that we're gonna be making use of. First of all, we're gonna be using this floor smudges one and also this gun scratches one, both of which I've downloaded, saved to my hard drive, and I'll be including a link to them underneath the video. Okay, let's move over to Max. Right, so this is our scene as we left it last time. We've still got our wooden floor material all good to go, and I've got the active shade window running so we can see the changes we make as we make them. Before we go any further though, I'm gonna click on this clone rendered frame window button <laughs> uh, and move it down here. Now that's just a, a snapshot of the active shade window. It will remain the same as we're making changes and it will give us a point of reference to compare our our, our new render to yeah okay so before we get started let's uh, make a little bit of room to work on the first part we're going to be adjusting is our gloss map or since we're inverting it uh, essentially it's a roughness map so there we go that should give us enough room now before we start adding in nodes I'm just going to talk about what it is we're about to do we're going to be taking our original roughness map where the dark areas are more shiny, more reflective, and the brighter areas are less shiny. Um, and then we're going to import our smudges texture. We're going to take the brighter areas of that map, uh, i.e. The, the footprints and smudges and whatnot, uh, and add that over the top of our roughness map. So on the actual material, wherever there's uh, footprints and smudges and whatnot, that'll, that'll be the reflections will be more blurred, less reflective, just in those areas, um, which is exactly the sort of effect that we want. Once we have this sort of combined roughness map, we'll then feed that into our wooden floor material. Okay, so let's get started with our nodes. I'm going to right mouse button, go to Maps, Arnold, uh, Texture, and then Image. Let's give it a name. Oh, we need to double click on it first. There we go. And we'll call it Smudges. And then under file name, I'm going to select the smudges texture, uh, which is, in this case, I'm using the overlay 16 4K one. There we go. Double click on that and set it to linear. Any color corrections or anything like that, we want the, the raw data from the image. Um, so that's why we set that to linear. You'll notice some of the other textures, uh, that's linear, for example, but reflection and color are set to sRGB because they contribute to the color of the finished material um, and therefore need to go through all of the color corrections and gamma corrections and whatnot. But we don't want that to happen to our smudges, so and it won't because we've got it on linear. Anyway, <laughs> next we're gonna add in a color correction node, same as we've got on our roughness map. This is just to allow us to um, set that back to how it was, there we go. <laughs> this is just to allow us to adjust the impact that the smudges will have on our uh, on our finished roughness roughness map. So we'll be able to lessen or increase the, the look of the smudges. So after that, we need to add in a Arnold Math Add Node, like so. And then we just feed the roughness map into the top and the smudges into the bottom. And then we can feed that into our roughness. There we go. Now the tiling's a little off there. Um, what we'll do actually, so we can see what our maps are doing, I'll show you a little technique here where we'll create another Arnold surface shader. There we go. And then for this one, I'm gonna turn off the base color and the specular reflections and then with the floor selected, I'm gonna assign that material to it. And you'll see it's completely black. We're not getting any of the uh, environment lighting or anything, it's just, just black, which is exactly what I want. And now let's uh, feed our smudges into the emission output, and we'll now see our map previewed. Uh, obviously at any time we could just go back to our wood, but when we've got this material assigned, it allows us to preview what our maps are doing. So let's adjust the uh, scaling a little bit. I've gone back to the image, double clicked on it, and we've got our scale here. Now I reckon a value of about 0.6 should work pretty well. You can also offset it if you wanna move where the smudges are. Let's say about there. Yeah, I think that'll work well. Now, 
the reason I like using this sort of emission preview, it really gives you an idea of exactly what you're doing. So this is our uh, our original roughness map. Obviously, it's a it's a gloss map that we imported in. Then we use the color correction to invert it, which turns it into a roughness map. And now we've got our finished scratches here. And what we want to do is add in this information to the roughness map, which is what this add node is doing. And now you can see the finished map. You've, we've got the roughness on the original roughness map underneath, and the smudges over the top. And if we adjust this color correction that we put in, we can lessen that impact. So I'll bring it down. And if you keep doing that, it will eventually just be the, the roughness map. Now, I reckon somewhere around the halfway mark will do pretty well. So let's go back over to our material. Yeah. Now, remember, it's supposed to be a subtle effect. We don't we don't want the floor to look dirty. We uh, It's still a, a relatively clean, nice looking floor. We just want it to have that slight indication that it's that it's that it's real, that it's been used, that people have walked around on it, etc. And I, I, I think that does that quite well. Okay, so next up we're gonna do pretty much the same type of thing with our normal map. We're gonna take in some uh, scratches, um, get them all scaled properly and whatnot, and then add them into our normal map. So let's start by adding in our uh, Scratches texture, sorry. <laughs> I'm waiting for my uh, brain to catch up with my mouth there. Um, so let's navigate to the gun scratches, which is here. And you'll notice with the gun scratches uh, and quite a few of the the material or the overlays that you download, that you'll have a lot of options. We've got a displacement map, normal maps, and overlays. Um, all good for different things in different situations. I found here the overlay works best uh, and is easier to work with. So we'll go for that, Gun Scratches, Overlay 16 4K, bring that in, give that a name of Scratches, just so we can keep everything neat and tidy. And then all we need to do is bring in an Arnold Bump Bump 2D. Now what a Bump 2D map does is take a um, original normal map, see if I feed that in there, and then feed this into the normal input, it will make absolutely no difference. The bump map is keeping the normal information and passing it along, but it allows you to then add to that normal map with a, a black and white image, um, which is what we've got here. If I reassign our emission preview shader and drop that in, we can see our scratches, yeah? So let's double click on scratches, let's move that back over there, um, and uh, affect the tiling. Now this one we wanna go, m the smudges we kind of uh, made bigger, so we sort of lowered the scaling. We want to raise the scaling. In this case, we want more scratches. I'm going to try a value of three. Yep, yeah, that's not bad. Now you'll notice here that you can't really see the scratches that well. And this is a perfect example of why you have to change the color space. I neglected to do that when I brought this texture in and you can't see the scratches that clearly. So if I change that to linear and suddenly there they are. Yeah, so it's really important you remember that step like I failed to do a moment ago. Um, anyway, I think that uh, tiling's pretty good. I'm just gonna move these about, see if I can find a, yeah. Yeah, we'll leave that there, that should work. And then feed this into the bump map of the bump 2D node. I'm gonna call this scratches as well, just so we can follow along what's, what's happening. Um, and now if I go back to the main shader and assign that back to the floor, we'll see our scratches are in place. Now, there's a few issues, as you might have picked up on. <laughs> so it's looking a little bit on the strong side. Um, and also, it's inverted. The At the moment, the scratches are bumping out of the floor. So we need to invert the height. When it says bump height here, if we go minus one, now they're cutting into the floor. But they're way too strong, way too strong. So we're gonna go minus, 0.02 even that might be a bit over the top no I think that oh no that is now it's clearing up a bit it's still uh, still a little on the harsh side so let's try minus 0.01 yeah I think that'll work for us we won't know for sure until we do a final render um, 
So let's do that now. I'm going to get rid of our little preview shader here, or at least disconnect that and maybe minimize it. Give it a name of Emission Preview. I, I, I won't be using this again, but uh, it's uh, it's handy to leave that around on your on your node displaying uh, for when you're working on your next material or whatever. You can just quickly uh, assign it and dump in whatever textures you need to, etc. Anyway, okay, let's do a final render. So I'm just going to quickly check the render settings here. All looking good. Let's go 1920 by 1080. Oh no, that's the active shade. Change it over to production mode. It's already on 1920 by 1080, and we'll just hit render. I'll pause the recording until it's done. And there we go. A few minutes later, we have our finished render. So let's take a look at it. Um, the I would make some adjustments. I actually think both effects need to be toned down just a little bit. Maybe the sponges are okay, but but definitely the scratches could do with just being a a little less strong. I think. Um, but yeah, for the purpose of a tutorial, I think that does just fine. Um, not a bad result. So in summary, we've taken our original wooden floor material and added in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches to give our floor a more realistic used feel.